Hello, and welcome to SoberCast, where we provide AA speaker meetings and workshops in podcast format. We're an ad-free podcast, and if you enjoy listening, please help us be self-supporting by visiting SoberCast.com, look for the donate link, and drop a dollar or two into our virtual basket. We hope you enjoy the podcast. Have a great day. My name is Bruce and I'm an alcoholic, and I'll be introducing Maud who's going to explain what is going to be happening up here. Roughly, we go back to March of 1938, when they're in the process of writing the 12 steps in the book, Alcoholics Anonymous, and how our program of recovery came about. So without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Marge, and we'll get out of the plane. Good evening. I mean, good afternoon. (laughs) My name is Marge, and I'm an alcoholic. Uh, this afternoon we present a play, The Twelve Steps by Homer D. And our purpose in presenting this play is to reenact the occasion of the writing of the Twelve Steps of the program of Alcoholics Anonymous. AA was founded in June 1935 as a result of a call for help from Bill W. from the Mayflower Hotel in Akron, Ohio, culminating in his meeting with Dr. Baum. Three years later, in the year 1938, definite action was taken for the writing and publication of what was to become known as the Big Book of Alcoholics Anonymous. By the March, month of March, 1938, Bill W. had begun to write the first two chapters of a book to formulate the principles and philosophy of the infant organization. At this time, the New York group was meeting in the home of Bill W. at 182 Clinton Street, Brooklyn, New York. This group was now using the six steps that they had taken from the absolutes of the Oxford group, from which the New York group of AA had originated, and from whom Bill W. had begun his thinking about what is now the Fellowship of Alcoholics Anonymous. By the spring of 1938, a definite program of action took shape. It was agreed that we needed a tax-free charitable trust or foundation. The board was set up of five trustees comprising three non-alcoholics and two alcoholics, one of whom was Dr. Baum. This was the formation of the Alcoholic Foundation, later to be renamed the General Service Board of Alcoholics Anonymous. The board attempted to solicit donations for the publishing of the proposed manifesto, but even the fact that such donations were tax-free made no difference, and progress was slow. Promises were made but not kept, and the group was discouraged. Now, in the fall of 1938, Bill took the first two chapters he had written to the religious editor of Harper Magazine. He offered Bill $1,500 in advance royalties for the proposed publication. However, though this offer spurred the group on to greater effort, Bill was in doubt. He feared accepting this offer because there was a strong possibility that the book might become the manual and text for the new organization, and were that to happen, the guiding of the organization would be in the hands of outside interests. Then a new element was added. Henry P., strategist, promoter, and idea man, came up with the suggestion that they incorporate and sell stock in a publishing company in order to get the money to publish. Objections were raised, but Henry just argued them all down. And one day he went to a stationery store, bought blank certificates, filled them in, and signed them Henry P. President. And they began selling them for $25 per share, and they were in business as Works Publishing Incorporated. Chapters 3 and 4 were written in Henry's office where Bill could work in quiet and concentrate on the text. Henry had a plush office and a secretary, Ruth Hoff, a large imposing desk, but no business. Finally, Bill was ready to draft Chapter 5, how it worked. He looked closely at the six steps that they were then using. The Oxford group had operated from the concept of the absolute. Absolute love, absolute purity, absolute unselfishness, and absolute honesty. The New York group had pulled out of the Oxford group and were now operating from the following steps. One, we admitted we were powerless over alcohol. Two, we made a moral inventory of our defects and sins. Three, we confessed or shared our shortcomings with another person in confidence. 
we made restitution to all those we had harmed by our drinking. Five, we tried to help other alcoholics with no thought or reward in money or prestige. Six, we prayed to whatever God we thought there was for power to practice these precepts. Bill felt that there was a need for more steps, that there be no loophole for the alcoholic, that the steps needed to be as clear, definite, and concise as possible. For some time also, Dr. Bob had been emphasizing the fact that the alcoholic had both a physical allergy and a mental compulsion. So Bill set about drafting 12 steps of the program as he saw it. He relaxed and asked for guidance. He started to write, and in about one half hour, he came up with 12 steps. Without any special rhyme or reason, Bill connected these with the 12 apostles. Apostles. The play deals with this direct formulation of the 12 steps by those men who, by virtue of having become stockholders in the publication of the book, were instrumental in the final drafting of the book. The 12 steps actually took three months to complete, but the play telescopes the various meetings into two, set in the latter part of 1938. Of the men involved, the liberal element was represented by Bill W., Howard A., boon companion of Bill, with two years of sobriety, and Joe S., friend of Howard's, with only three months of sobriety. The conservatives were represented by Paul K., early New York minister, and Fitz M., Episcopal minister's son, and second man in the New York group to recover. These two were religious and demanded that the 12 steps be presented along strictly theological lines. Directly and violently opposed were the two radicals, Henry P., promoter, former salesman, and agnostic, and Jim B., salesman and professed atheist. Henry's secretary, Ruth Hawk, though not an alcoholic, provided many ideas for the book and acted as leveler and arbiter of the rampant emotionalism of group members. Another peacemaker and staunch supporter was Bill's wife, Lois. As the play opened, Bill W. had just arrived home, tired and discouraged. He has just about finished drafting the 12 steps as he saw them, but he is disheartened. He and his wife talk about his responsibility, and later on callers arrive. Well, hello, dear. I thought I had you coming in. Well, hi, Lois. Oh, boy. <laughs> How are you? I'm doing okay, but you look so tired. Oh, boy, I am. I'll tell you, I just came from Henry's office, and I've been working all day on this draft, chapter five of our new book. And I'm telling you, I'm just bush. I'm beginning to think, what's the use? Now, what do you mean, what's the use? Oh, no one will care. And it's just too difficult to put this thing into words. It's been too long in the writing. I feel I'm not getting anywhere. And even if I do finish, who cares? I think we should just forget the whole thing. Oh, Bill, I care, and you care, and you just can't quit. You're tired. Now is the moment you need your courage the most. <laughs> yeah, but now is the moment my courage is at its lowest. You know, if it hadn't have been for you, Lord, Ruth, and Henry... I wouldn't have got anywhere near this done. But I'm afraid old Henry, he's just primarily interested in the sales of the book. Yeah. And I don't care anything about the sales. I just can't see much use in continuing this anguish. You know, I'm no writer anyway. Well, Bill, you may not be a writer, but you have the experience and knowledge of the alcoholic and the answer to his problem. And that is what is important. You're not writing for us or for the money or to be a bestseller. You're writing for those poor people coming later, stumbling through their jungle of heartache, self-deception, and misery. You know that that is their condition. Many times they don't even know what is the matter, much less what to do about it. Oh, I know all that, Lois, but the gee, I'm just too tired. This thing's too endless. Well, what you really need is some rest. And you know... The president was talking on the radio today, and he said for us to remember that old slogan, Damn the torpedoes, full speed ahead. I think that's what you need to remember right now, full speed ahead. Oh, yeah. Oh, 
I guess you're right here, but I don't know. By the way, you brought up something, boy. The president is facing some pretty rough decisions himself right now on behalf of the whole country. If Hitler keeps going the way he is over there in Europe, boy, we're going to be forced into this war. And then we'll have plenty of heartache and misery, I'll tell you. I hope old Roosevelt can come up with some of our answers. And I guess, I guess you're right about our answers, too. I realize this, you know, this is so true. We do have this duty, this responsibility to others. They just need our help and guidance. That's much better, Bill. It sounds sure. more like you. You can't give up now for their sake and for yours. You have the answer and they will need it. And you will never know peace and serenity if you don't pass on the message to others. Now you rest for a while and I'm going to go in the kitchen and make you a nice pot of coffee. Oh, well, now I can use that. That's, that's great. I'll stay here and work on this. Okay. Straight it out. Oh, listen. Oh, no. A lot of rest. Oh, yes. It's yeah. rest and quiet around all the time. Oh. Hi there. Well, Howard and Joe. How are you, Joe? <laughs> Howard, oh, what oh, brings you people oh, out tonight? Nice to see you. Oh, we just thought we'd stop by and make sure you want to talk with us. So I thought I'd bring Joe along. You know, he just got sober and I said, well, oh, he calls me where I go. Very good. Very good. Sit down. Come on. Sit down. Sit down. Well, old friend of mine. Look, I'm glad you guys came along. Uh, I've just finished drafting 12 steps for our new program. Uh, that's a good idea. Why, why don't you read those? There they are, right over there. The coffee of them right there. Over here, huh? There. Why don't you read them and see what you think of them? One, we admitted we were lit, that we were powerless over alcohol. Two, came to believe in God and that he could restore us to sanity. Three, made a decision to turn our will and our lives over to the care of God. Four, made a moral inventory of our defects and sins. Five, admitted to God, to ourselves, and to another human being the exact nature of our wrongs. Six, we asked God to remove our defects of character. Seven, got on our knees and asked God to remove our shortcomings. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we made restitution to those we had harmed while drinking. Let's see. Nine, made direct amends to the list of people that we had harmed. Ten, continue to take a personal inventory and ask God guidance daily. Right. Oh, Eleven, sought through prayer and meditation to improve our conscious contact with God, praying only for the knowledge of his will for us and the power to carry that out. And Twelve, having had a spiritual experience and a vision from God as a result of these steps, you got heavy here, huh? <laughs> we must carry this message to other alcoholics and to practice these principles in everything that we do. Well, that's good, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Kind of heavy. <laughs> kind of heavy. Oh, I don't know about you. For someone like me, you know, that sounds pretty good, Bill, but you know, you sure put a lot of time and thought on this, but why 12 steps? Why not six like we had? Well, look, Howard. We've all agreed that these steps ought to be more explicit. You see? We can't leave any holes. An alcoholic is the world's best for finding a way not to stay away from that first drink. Also, I've kind of got these steps associated with the Twelve Apostles. Yeah, but I see some trouble ahead. There's one thing that's going to upset a lot of people. You have too much God in some steps. Alcoholics won't go for that. Oh, no, I haven't. Now, look, I prayed a long time before I started these steps. Believe me, there are hours, there are days of meditation and prayer. And you didn't know how to put this thing down into words. It's so difficult. And then all of a sudden, it came to me, I sat down, and in less than half an hour, I had them written down just as they are there. I know they were given to us by God. They stay just as they are ready because God gave them to us. You've got to get on your knees in step seven. 
Do you mean to get drunks on their knees to have their shortcomings removed? In the first place, they won't get on their knees. In the second place, they really don't want to have their shortcomings removed. They think they're having too much fun. Oh, come on. (laughs) (laughs) Joe, we have to have more spirituality in this program. You know, one of the troubles with the alcohol, with me, with you, so, hey, you know, we just refuse to get on our knees to anyone or anything except alcohol. Well, Bill, you know, most of this stuff sounds real good, but, you know, if you could just soften it a bit, tone it down some. Oh, you guys. It's pretty stiff for a bunch of guys who haven't been thinking of anything but a bottle for a long time. Henry won't like it, and I can just hear Jim scream like somebody stepped on his toe when he hears it. <laughs> say, I've only been around here only three months, but I've heard some of you say you wish Jim would get drunk so you wouldn't have to listen to his troublemaking anymore. <laughs> <laughs> all kidding aside, Bill, you know, there'll be a lot of alcoholics who aren't atheists who will balk at all this God talk. It's possible they won't even try the program. No, sir. No, sir. I'm not going to give in on this. <laughs> You guys make me sick anyway. Yeah. Here I work and work and work. It's wrong, you know. Nobody helps. All it is just from Bill, you do it. Bill, you do it. I work and work. And then I get a message from God that this is the way it's supposed to be. And now all of a sudden, huh, you, you want to soften them down a bit. God's words are soft. No, the 12 steps say just as they're written. Bill, you're being bullheaded. You can't force people to accept God. Oh, come on. Bill, you ought to at least talk it over with someone. You're not allowing for any personal choice. Everyone ought to be allowed to express his opinion. Well, maybe I'm wrong, Bill, but maybe you are, too. Why don't you get some other ideas about it? When have I been wrong? (laughs) (laughs) Just what you brought me here for? (laughs) Yeah. Well... Every everything that's done around here, Howard, you try to moderate it. You try to make it more soft. You try to make it, uh, I don't know. Uh, here you're supposed to be my best friend, and here we, everything I try to do, you pick holes in it. I don't know what to do. Well, I've been telling Joe, you know, you're such an easy-going guy. I said, you really like this guy. Now here you sit down here being bullheaded about this thing. I thought we got along in the past. Everything I do, you try to change it. Why can't you accept anything? We'll never get this book written. Maybe, maybe Joe has a good idea, though. You know? I'll do that at least. Let's call a meeting of the stockholders in our little publishing venture, and I'll read it to them. Could we have a meeting here tomorrow night, Ross? Do we have anything going? Well, if we did, I'd cancel it for that. All right, let's do it. And you know it's getting pretty late tonight. And uh, I think you ought to have your coffee and just sort of simmer down here a little bit. Well, all right. We'll have the meeting tomorrow night, but I don't think anyone can change my mind. Well, I'm certain these steps were given to us by God, and I don't think they should be changed. Not one word. All right, this is scene two. Present are Bill W., Henry T., Paul K., Fitz N., Howard A., Joe S., Ruth, and Lois W. Here they come. Here they come. Well, we got here early. They'll take all the seats. <laughs> Get some of the coffee. How are you? Hey, we have two doors to the Yeah, I right know. Hi, <laughs> Hello, Bill. Yeah. Well, how are you doing? Good How are you? Glad to see you. Yeah. Hello, Howard. Hello, Joe. Oh, hi. How are you? Good to see you. You sit down here next to me. Oh, hi. How are you, Joe? Good. How are you? Good. Hi, Joe. Great. Enjoy the people. Hi, Joe. 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 H
Henry, you were with me. Why don't you tell him about it? I sure will, Bill. Gentlemen, Bill and I were up to see the editor's Reader's Digest this afternoon, and the Digest is going to give us a send-off on our book when we get it printed. It just so happens I have some work publishing incorporated stock with me, and five will get you ten. At least that this stock will go to a hundred bucks when the Digest word gets out. You say Reader's Digest. With their circulation, boy, that's a ten strike on our side. See, God does do many, many things for us. Well, Henry, I sure wish I could buy some more stock, but I sure do have a bad case of financeitis right now. <laughs> hey, that's all around good news, but I have some of that thing that Joe has. Well, Henry, haven't you set up some way to finance this stock? Yeah. What's well, here in this group? Five bucks down, five bucks a week. But it's cash on the barrel that's for the outsiders. <laughs> well, okay. Well, let's see if we can get this book finished on the way. Ruth, can you take the notes for it? All prepared. That's what I'm here for. Okay. Here's what I have. Chapter 5, How It Works. Never have we seen a person fail who has thoroughly followed our path. Those who don't recover are people who cannot or will not completely give themselves to this simple program. This is usually the guy that is constitutionally incapable of being honest. There are such people, but they are not to blame. They seem to have been born that way. They are just naturally incapable of being honest. There are those, too, who suffer from grave emotional disorders, but many of them do recover if they have the capacity to be honest. Our stories disclose in a general way what we were like, what happened, and what we are like now. If you have decided you want what we have and are willing to go to any length to get it, then you must take these steps. If some of these we bought, we thought we could find an easier, softer way, but we could not. With all the earnestness at our command, we beg of you to be fearless from the very start. Remember that we deal with alcohol, cunning, baffling, and powerful. Without help, it is too much for us. But there is one who has all power. That one is God. May you find him now. Half measures availed us nothing. We stood at the turning point. We asked God's protection and care with absolute abandon. Here are the steps we took as a program of recovery. Now, now, what do you think of? What do you think of this preamble before we go into the steps? Bill? You positively just got too much God in this preamble. I tell you, say that. <laughs> Henry, I think we have got to have a spiritual program. And how are you going to have any spirituality without mentioning God? The alcoholic has got to have a program to live by, a new way of life. Something to live by is what he needs. And inasmuch as this chapter is the very backbone of our book and our program, we must put ourselves into some other hand. Hmm. Hands that are much, much more strong than any human hand. Invisible hands. God hands. Well, bless you, Bill. <laughs> Those are words direct from our blessed Jesus Christ. I think it is all just great and gave unto you from God his very self. You take God out of this program and you're going to have nothing. You'll have nothing. Bill, you're so right. Really, you should mention more of God. Jesus said, glorify me before men and I'll glorify you to my Father who is in heaven. Yeah. I think there should be more quotations from the Bible in the book. Amen. Hell, I can't see this God stuff. Alcoholics ain't going to buy that stuff, and I want this book to sell. Let's sell a million copies, a million bucks. 
I think if you delete God in this book completely, you're going to have a book that any drunk will buy. Bill, may I say something? <laughs> Boy, go ahead, Howard. Henry, Bill has a lot of good stuff in his preamble. I'll admit it should be toned down some, but I do agree with Paul, Fitz, and Bill that this is the backbone of the program, and I don't see how there can be any kind of a new way of life without God. I agree with them, too. Oh. Yeah. Amen. You see, Henry, we aren't all wrong. Maybe you should give a listen. You know, <laughs> that Irish in you and those mixed emotions you have, you come up with some pretty snap decisions sometimes. Well, maybe so, Bill. Just my opinion, you know. At least I believe that right in that very first sentence you said, never have we seen a person fail. Sounds like we're bragging. In other words, anybody who joins us will stay sober if he follows our path. And a good many have already gone out and got drunk, you know. But you would say rarely it would start Chapter 5 out much better. Well, Hank, look. That's what we're here for tonight. I'll admit that it's going to take a little bit of editing. Well, that's what we're here for tonight. Well, you know, well, we have to put the commas in the right place, and maybe change one word here or there. <laughs> but, uh, you know, that's uh, Ruth, you've been taking notes, haven't you? Yes, I have, Bill. Uh, do you have any ideas? Well, yes. Instead of never, start out with rarely. All right. Have we seen a person fail who has thoroughly followed our path? Those who do not are people who cannot or will not give themselves to this simple program. Usually the guy, Bill, I think they should read men and women, as I surely believe there are going to be women as well as men in this program. Oh, now, Ruth, wait just a minute. <laughs> you mean women? Women drunk uh, sitting in on some of our meetings? Uh, my goodness, uh, some of the language that's used around some of these tables isn't so good. Oh, no, I, I, I don't know. In some ways, I think some of your ideas are as wild as Henry. I work for him. Is it, is it possible? Is it possible that we would have women in this program? I better not be too dogmatic about that, Bill. I've seen plenty of drunken babes in my case. Could <laughs> <laughs> be. Could yeah. be. You know, Bill, Ruth might have something there. We better leave the door open than close it and be sorry later. Yeah, Bill, I, I, it can't do no harm to take Ruth's suggestion, maybe. Bill, I have a hunch that it's the female intuition that we're dealing with here. Maybe we better go along with it. Oh, Lord, <laughs> female intuition. I've been dealing with that long enough. Ooh. Well, look, I, I'm not dead set against the idea that you think that you know, that it's okay for women to be a part of this thing. I don't know, it sure sounds a little outlandish to me when I first heard it. But, uh, God, if the group thinks it's okay, this is group conscience, I'll go along. Men and women? Usually men and women who are constitutionally incapable of being honest. Okay. With themselves? This is a selfish program, you know. Okay. <laughs> yeah, with themselves. Okay. 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 Bill, back to that bit where you refer to people who are incapable of being honest. You say they are such people, but they are not to blame. You know, I'd say there, there are such unfortunate. They are not at fault. They seem to have been born that way. They're naturally incapable of grasping and developing a manner of living which demands rigorous honesty. And I'd say their chances are less than average right in there. Oh, that's great, Paul. Ruth, did you get that? Yes, I have that. Very good. Really good. Bill, that grave emotional disorder should be grave emotional and mental disorder. We're all here because we're not all there in the first place. <laughs> <laughs>
Amen. Amen. Oh, Henry, boy, for you, we will put that in there. You know, I suggest changing to what we were like to what we used to be like. It sounds a lot better to me. Oh, yes, sir. That, that makes it more emphatic. What do you well, think? if you have decided you want what we have, you must take certain steps. I was just wondering. I don't think we should have any must in AA. Right. You can't drive an Alpine. <laughs> okay, gang. That, that's easy. Let's just say then you are ready to take certain steps. And then, that one is God. That rocks me, man. I don't think we'll ever sell this book to anybody, much less the alcoholic. Then we ask God's protection. You know, Bill, we could say ask his protection. Ask his protection. All right. We will change God's protection to his protection. Okay? But that one is God. May you find him now, stays as is. Well, yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Bless you, sir. Bless you, sir. Bill, I'd like to suggest that here are some steps we took which are suggested as a program of recovery. It moves a certain, it removes a certain amount of force or must. Okay, Fitz. I believe you're right, Ruth. Can you add that? Yeah, that's no problem, Bill. Okay. We've gone through the preamble, and I don't know exactly how it's going to, to read when we get through more. But I think what we accomplished here is very good. Now we come to the steps of draft. I'll read them one at a time, and we can discuss them. And then maybe add a comma or a word here and there. Go <laughs> along. You're going to find me very much set in my ways on this draft, so please bear with me. I think you will have to agree that these will be the very backbone of our newly found program. My first step we admitted we were licked, that we were powerless over alcohol. One drink, then just one more, then another, then on and on. I just can't stop. I am powerless to stop, and it's that very first one that starts the whole bit. I'm powerless over alcohol. I have the same reaction as Henry. In every bout, I've had it. It all boils down to that very first drink, and I never even looked at it that way before. But what kind of managers are we while drinking? I would say that alcohol had a big part in managing our life. <laughs> well, with alcohol, I am powerless, plus unmanageable. But with God on my side, not drinking, I can manage life. That is my life. Praise the Lord, I don't ever have to drink anymore. Hallelujah. And through the blessed Jesus Christ, I don't ever have to take that very first drink. I know he will help me not to do so, too. Bless you. Thanks. <laughs> it seems to me here on this first step that you are powerless plus unmanageable of your life. So I suggest that the step read like this. We admitted that we were powerless over alcohol and that our life had become unmanageable. What's your reaction to that? Well, we certainly do admit that we're powerless over alcohol. This is the first step in our manual now, isn't it? Maybe we should leave it like that. Powerless over alcohol. That's the name of the game. And it sure logically follows that this lack of power over booze will make our lives a real mess. And if our lives are all messed up, we uh, certainly can't manage them. Ruth, I just believe you put it in better words than I originally had it. Yeah, Bill, you just can't improve on it the way Ruth has it. Hey, I think this can be the very first step. You know, we could nitpick this for an hour and not come up with a better way to express it. You know, Bill, I'm satisfied with it also. 
Yeah, I'm real new to the program, but that powerless and unmanageable fits me like a glove. I can go along with that language. There's no mention of God in it, so it can't hurt the sale of a book. <laughs> oh, gentlemen, this is real good. This is real good. This is our first step. Hey, we're on our way now. You know, I believe that one day many sick alcoholics will take this first step in its entirety. And if they only do, this opens up to them a new way of life that starts with new horizons, new friends, and a full life of total sobriety. I think this group, that's wonderful. Group conscience make this our first step. All right? This is what I have for step number two. I need to give me a call. Yeah. It was too quiet. You gotta start uh, without even notifying me, huh? Right straight. Oh, come on, Jim. Come on up here. Come on, we had a lot to do tonight. So we started on time. We didn't know whether you were coming or not. That's figures. I think a bunch of these Bible thumpers were praying that I wouldn't show. Especially these two holy rollers over here. You know, ever since they sobered up, all they know is praise the Lord. (laughs) (laughs) Come on, Jim. Come on up and sit down. Yeah, I guess so. Jim, why do you take the Lord's name in vain, though? Jim, I hope that one day you too will learn those three words, praise the Lord, and say them from your very heart. Remember when Jesus said, Saul, Saul, why persecute thou me? And Saul fell on his face and became Paul, one of the apostles and great follower of Jesus. Amen. Come on, Jim. We've, we've already started. We've gone over the preamble. We've changed our first step to read. They're powerless over alcohol and their life has become unmanaged. Now we're at step two. You sit down and help us work this thing out. Well, Bill, you know, for you I will. But these two holy throwers, uh, they still got to help far back in us. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Well, I started to read step two just as Jim came in. Well, let's go on with it. Here is what I have. We came to believe in God and that he could restore us to sanity. What does that mean to believe in God? Why, why hell, these holy rulers, they've even got Bill in a trance. Jim, I've been sitting here hearing all this God stuff, and if I had my way, I'd delete it entirely. But this gang has told me it's the only way to reach the alcoholic. And I sure want this book to go. I sure like the looks of those greenbacks. I wrote me. Oh, Hank, you ain't gonna see no greenbacks with that kind of crud in it, because there won't be over a hundred copies sold. Came to believe in God. Hey, come on now, you guys. Look, this isn't a two-way discussion. Let's carry on with this. God will restore us to sanity if we believe in him is about what you have said, then. I don't believe that we should be so persuasive. My theory is that we let the alcoholic choose for himself some power to help him. There is Jim and Harry that do not believe in God a bit, but I think they will someday. I think they will choose some power that is greater than themselves. You know what I've gathered here, men, is that maybe we could modify this step. Bill, I think Joe and Howard have a good idea there. It should stay just as it's written. What do you suggest? Came to believe that a power greater than ourselves could restore us to sanity. That sounds a lot better to me. Yes, me too. I believe Ruth has the answer to step two. They came to believe in this power, and later they will choose to call him God. Well, I would not change what Bill has set down. Because God gave him them steps, and they should stay as is. Well... I feel the same way as Paul. But it seems that somehow our group conscience has entered into this thing again for what Ruth has written. The 
you said came to believe that a power greater than ourselves could restore us to sanity. Right. It doesn't change the step for me. I'll compromise. Okay? Is that all right for the group? Yeah, okay. That'll be step two. Now for the third step. I made a decision to turn our will and our lives over to the care of God. What God? You know, this I don't understand. How in the hell are you going to turn your life over to something you know absolutely nothing about? I'll back Jim up on that. Oh, but. Well, I don't think here that we could make, you know, some kind of a decision and put our problem in God's hands. This step is good to me. It sort of opens the gate for us to a spiritual way of life. Yeah, make a decision to the blessed Jesus Christ. He will carry you through. Amen on that. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord, Paul. On bended knee, pray to the blessed Jesus and receive his blessing. Right. Wait a minute. What is this? A meeting for drunk or is this a prayer meeting for the God-fearing Holy Roller? You know, you show me the average drunk on his knees and I'll show you the sun rising in California and setting in New York. I bet he's seen it. Yeah, he probably. <laughs> <laughs> probably seen it. Yeah. Well, look. It seems that there has to be some change in this God thing, this definite statement of God. Maybe we should just say, as we understand him. What do you think of that? We made a decision to turn our will and our lives over to the care of God as we understand. All right? This becomes step three. It will be. God is the understanding. Now for step four. We made a moral inventory of our defects or sins. Gentlemen, maybe this step is not complete. What I've heard around the tables on the other three steps, maybe it'll require a change. <laughs> All right, let, let's go around the table and discuss it. What do you think, Howard? Well, Bill, you know, an inventory is sure very necessary. But will it scare us back to the opening of the bottle? When I think of some of the things I did, it scares me. Bitch, search out thyself, and ye shall find thyself. Let not your hearts be troubled. Come unto me, and I will give you peace. These are God's words to us. We should not be afraid. To do. Henry? As I see this step, I too think it's very important. I also think that we should collect the good of us with the bad. It will relieve a lot of the fears. After all, we're not all bad, you know. Jim? Ah, uh, this stuff leaves me on the cold. The defects of, or sin fit has a lot of cock crap all over it. Hmm. Paul? Well, if you just count your many blessings and see what God has done for you, that's all I ask in this step every day. Well, Ruth, have you any ideas just from what you've heard on this step? Yes, Bill. I've detected fear which the alcoholic shouldn't have. <clears throat> and I've also noted that we should search out our good with our bad. And so perhaps the step might better read, made a searching and fearless moral inventory of ourselves. No defects or sins. Ah, this, this, I don't know. It's going to have to be changed. What you've said pleases me. But how do the rest of you feel about it? What do you think, Howard? Well, Bill, maybe I'm too scared about me and taking an inventory. I guess the only way to get over this fear is to bring it all out in the open. <laughs> this? I repeat, we should not be afraid. A moral inventory is absolutely essential. And Ruth has a fine idea there. Okay. Henry? 
We know we all have faults. I sure have. Only by contrasting our faults with our good points will we ever know where we stand. How about you, Jim? Contrasting our faults with our good points will we ever know where we stand. How about you, Jim? I'll go along with Ruth, but I can balance my own record without all that god crap. Oh? Well, Bill, as, uh, as Bill first read it, and as Ruth has improved on it, it is just right with me. Regardless of what Jim uh, says, we can't hide anything from the blessed Jesus Christ. Amen, Paul. Amen. Amen. <laughs> well, then, okay. That's step four. We made a searching and fearless moral inventory of ourselves. Now we come to step five. It's my personal belief that this step is very important and personal. I have meditated a great deal on this. I'm in hope it can be written just as is. Now here's what I have. Admitted to God, to ourselves, and to another human being. The exact nature of our wrongs. Don't you want to say to God as we understand him? I say no on this, Jim. After all, we compromised on all the rest of the occasions. Surely you, you two, can sway our way once in a while. Well, I tried anyway. Well, all I hope is it doesn't stop the sale of the book. <laughs> <laughs> Look, <laughs> don't worry about the book. You men amaze me. I sit right in the middle of the writing of this book. I have the liberals and the radicals and the leftists and the right wing, and also Dr. Bob and the Akron group all around me, everyone pulling all different ways. I would like to feel that I should have the right to judge, you know, just basically with this step and leave it written as is to go into the book. Well, certainly... No man among us has given more time and devotion to this book than Bill. Why shouldn't he be given the final say? I will go a step further and make a motion that Bill be the final judge if we find ourselves in a great disagreement. I second that motion. Gentlemen, I appreciate that. Let's just vote on the one thing. I would like to see step five go into the book just as it's written. Now, I meditated a great deal on these steps. and took step five as a basis and worked both ways to get these things in the right order. And I would just like to see step five go into the book the way it's written. What do you think? Uh, uh, I, 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 uh, all thank good. you. Yes. Good. Now for step six. We ask God to remove all these defects of character. This step I cannot see. As of now, I'm not willing to ask God anything. Maybe someday I'll see it your way. But right now I don't. Like Henry, I don't see it either. I don't think very many alcoholics will see it. No, sir. Uh-uh. No, you may not see it now, but I feel in time that if you... Work this set of steps, you will become willing to ask God. Yeah, I do say that one day they will be entirely ready to have God remove these defects of character. Sounds like to me that this step could read we're entirely ready. Yeah, this sounds much better to me. It removes the pressure and the must. Very good. Let's change the step then to read... We're entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character. Now, we have an agreement. All right. All right. All right. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay, the reason I call this meeting tonight with all of the guys associated in our little <coughs> book publishing foundation that I ran into a heated discussion on step seven last night. I still think I'm right with what I have down here. Maybe, well, I hope you'll hold your tempers and bear with me. Uh, this is what I have for step seven. We 
We ask God on our knees to remove our shortcomings. Well, praise the Lord. God bless you, Bill. You are really and truly inspired by the blessed Jesus Christ. Get on your knees and be humble when you talk to God. Amen. Oh, that is good, Bill. Seek and ye shall find. To this step I say amen, too. Wow. What an order. What an order. Bless there goes our book all shot to hell. In the first place, you guys make me sick. You've been talking all night about God, and now on your knees. <coughs> Jim will back me up on this God bit. I ain't got no God. These things are Greek to me. The sun comes up and the moon goes down. That's just law. The wind blows, rain, hail, snows. They're nice clear days. That's just plain law. Nature. Old Mother Nature. Stars, earth, moon, sun. Just plain law. Hell, fire, I can't stand this crap. Bill? <laughs> I back Henry up on this. What in the hell is the matter with you guys? I have never gotten down on my knees, and I don't intend to. And if you think a bunch of drunks are going to start to, this idea is going to keep them sober, you're just plain nuts. If you insist on sticking God in these steps, it's got to be God, as we understand him, or we're all going to get drunk. Hmm. Now, you know, I don't think Jim or Henry is ever going to make this program. <laughs> and I don't think they got any business here, either. Hmm. Like, Paul, I, too, think that they should be cast out of our fellowship. Hmm. Well, I don't. How can you work any one of these steps and have this kind of thinking toward a sick human being? I also don't think you're going to get a bunch of drunks on their knees. Who are we to judge anybody? Hmm. Yes, who are we to tell who is going to stay sober and who isn't? Are we going to pick whom we want in our program? Will this be AA? You know, I just merely voiced my opinion. This happens to be the way I believe. I, too, came from Towns Hospital. But I have been through this fellowship to remain sober this past year. What are you going to do about it? Just kick me back to Skid Row? Wait a minute, Henry. I don't think you can kick us out. Your consciences won't permit you to. Let him talk. Let him talk. Let him get it off your chest. I'll tell you one thing, though. They might need us. But we need them. We can't kick anybody out. If they have a desire to stay sober, that's the only requirement for membership. I'm sorry, Jim. Well, I got too much money in this thing to get out now. (laughs) (laughs) I'm sorry, Jim. Boy, you sure give up easy. (laughs) Me too, Henry. Forgive me for being so unjust. Well, I too must ask your forgiveness. I guess I was wrong. Boy. You guys sure get excited. Are we ready to resume the discussion on this step? Now look, Jim and Henry have just related to me that we will have many in our program who have no God except the Bible. But they do have one thing. This, the one thing we all do have in common, that's the desire to stop drinking. And this, gentlemen, is the one and only purpose that we have. In other words, our purpose is to help them stay sober, no matter how we do it or how we believe I'm thoroughly convinced that we must have some power greater than ourselves to help us refrain from reaching for that first drink. Maybe Jim and Henry don't see it that way. Give them time. I am positive that they, too, will believe in this power the same as we do. Well, first, uh, Phil, all of this, the whole thing, ask Hank and I for forgiveness. And bless their holy roller hearts. I want to thank them for that. 
throw a ball and fits, I do forgive you. Can we shake on it? Well, Jim, I forgive them too. Here's my hand on it. Well, God loves you both. Oh, you he wouldn't let her alone. He wouldn't let her alone, huh? You gotta have that in front of her. <laughs> now, Bill, in that seventh step there, maybe we should do a bit of compromising on the knees a bit. But I do think, though, that we should have humility in working this program. Surely we can be humble about our good graces we have found in this new way of life. Listen, men, why don't we do as Paul suggests? Instead of going to bend his knee, why not omit that and say, humbly ask him? I suppose I should give a little on this step. After all, it is sort of severe for a drunk. Well, I think it should stay as written. Bill got this direct from God, and I think it should not be changed. Bill, I think that Ruth has the answer to this step. So do I. Even I'll go along with that. Well, it beats the hell out of getting down on your knees, and it just may save the book. Let's see, Ruth. Read, read that back to me. Humbly ask him to remove our shortcomings. I sure. Well... That seems far from what I have here, and yet is it? If you want to be humble on your knees, go ahead. If you don't want to be humble on your knees, be humble any way you wish. Yes, yeah, sir. Right. <laughs> if the group favors what Ruth has there, I'll concede to it. This will be step seven, but under protest, mind you. Yes. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> okay. Step eight. We made restitution to those we harmed while drinking. We made restitution? Yes. What in the hell is restitution? I mean, outside of the Bible. Sounds very biblical to me, but I wonder how old Webster defines it. Henry, I think that's a polished word for a floor mat. Of course, these holy rollers here know the word they use for turning the other cheek. <laughs> Restitution sounds like some of that polished God stuff to me, man. Oh, come on, you guys. We have here, it's practically the same or it is the same as our fourth step. We're not saying anything here that we haven't been using all along. Well, I never did or I never will use that step. Jim, you don't know it, but you already used this very step. Remember how we shook hands there in step seven? That's restitution. Sure. In other words, it isn't being a floor man. It is more of a house cleaning of your soul. It is a step we cannot leave out. It is very essential to us alcoholics to clean our house and not be bugged. Jesus said, if your right hand bothers you, cut it off. And if your right eye causes you sin, pluck it out. Wow. That's pretty severe, isn't it? <laughs> but what Jesus really means here is clean your soul, be free, make amends to your fellow men you have harmed. That's what he means. You know, man, I learn a great deal from you good people. For suggestion on this eighth step, I've gathered this, that we make amends to those we harm. Man, I have harmed a great many people, more than I'll ever get time in this life to make amends to. But I'm sure willing to try. That's good. Yeah, we could say in this eighth step, made amends to people we had harmed, as Ruth just mentioned. Well, as Paul said before, seek and ye shall find. But you ought to get a pencil and people, bleh, piece of paper and make a list of people you, you did harm to. Be sure you don't forget any of them either. And go to them and to God and ask their forgiveness. As Paul said a moment ago, clean your soul and become free men. Amen. Amen. Praise, Praise the Lord. Oh, come on. <laughs> Look, Jim, let's not get back into this personality clash. Ruth, from what's been said, I believe that we should change this step to read, we made a list of all the persons we had harmed and became willing to make amends to them all. 
Okay, that should be real good. Covers about everything we've discussed here, so if that's the way you want it, Bill, that's the way I've got it down now. What do you think, group? I came willing to make amends to them all. That's good. All right. This is okay for the eighth step, but it's almost like the ninth step that's already in the draft. So we'll probably have to rectify step nine to tie in with the new step eight. I believe it's one of the most important steps for staying sober. So let's move on now to step nine. I have here in the draft that we made direct amends to the list of people we harmed. Man, this list of steps is sure going to keep a man on his toes. If he isn't on his knees praying, he's on his knees making amends to his enemies. Well, maybe you can stay sober. At least you sure aren't going to have much time to spend with the bottle. <laughs> well, that suits me fine. I'll stand on my head if it keeps you from taking that first drink. Amen. 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 Bill, I know this making amends is good. This house cleaning is completely necessary. But there are some amends that if I made would certainly lead to very much injury to me. And not only me, but to other innocent people. It's a big order, Bill. Bill, you know, just like me going over to the next apartment to make amends to her because I got all drunk and stepped out with his wife. And hell, he just didn't use any judgment at all. He busted me square in the nose and closed both my eyes. Not only that... But he beat the hell out of Lucy the boot. <laughs> well, you didn't get it off your chest, but you paid through the nose and then, man. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Well, that's, that's terrible. Howard, I think that's all. <laughs> I did, too. But I think we should use our better judgment in some of these amends. You know, what I would do is go to Jesus and ask his advice. He will guide you and protect you from the amends that would harm you or others. Amen. Ed. Look, Ruth, step nine is going to have to be rectified, all right? Have you gathered any ideas for changes? No, I can see several good points that have been brought out. We will make direct amends to such people. But something has to be brought in, something like uh, wherever possible, except when to do so would injure them or others. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I gather from the discussion on injury and harm that some men's are going to have to be, they're going to become too difficult to do. <laughs> so probably what you have there, Bill, is right. Make direct amends to people wherever possible, except when to do so would injure them or others. So what's your pleasure on this? How about it, then? We cannot have this program directing us to relieve our own conscience at the expense of someone else. We have to bring in, except when to do so would injure them or others. Okay? What do you say, Joe? It makes it more comfortable for me, and still it doesn't weaken the basic idea of making amends. Howard? Well, I like it because it gives a guy a chance to, to make a personal judgment. Fitz, we sure don't want to make any amends and then find we've hurt someone. Jim, I'll buy it, just as long as I don't have to make amends on bended knees. <laughs> Henry? <laughs> yeah, it's about the most sensible change we've made all evening. <laughs> Paul? I think the suggested change is just great, Bill. More and more, I can see this group taking on the real meaning of spirituality. Okay. We have step nine in good order. Now we come to the tenth step, and it'll have to be altered. You know, we change one step, and it bears on the ones that follow. <laughs> Throws the step out of, out of order. The original draft was, uh, I thought, fit real good. To me, they were a very good sequence. But now, we'll have to change step ten. Here's what I have. We continued to take a personal inventory and ask God's guidance daily. You see, I think we should search out ourselves each day and ask God to direct our steps in life for this new day. 
Step 10 will prepare us in reality for our next step, number 11. We'll all throw it out on the table. See how the group here feels about it. Let's start off with Henry. Thank you, Bill. Now, in the first part of this step, continue to take a personal inventory. This, I think, is good. How am I doing? My ego inflating? Am I doing the proper things to stay sober? If, in these questions which I ask myself, I find I am in error, shouldn't I myself do something about it? But as to the ask God's guidance daily bit, as far as I'm concerned, that need not even be there. Now, that's my opinion, Bill. Okay, Henry. Oh, and by the way, you certainly have a right to your own opinion. In fact, I hope that what we do or say here, gentlemen, is strictly our own opinion. Paul, what do you think, think of the tenth step? Well, Bill, you know that I am in full agreement with all those steps you wrote in the first place because I felt that they were given to you by God. And uh, I still think they should be in the book just as you received them. Okay, Paul. What about you, Fitz? Well, Bill, you know we are all born with sin, so naturally we should be on guard. And when we do get sober, we may get lax. So to continue with a personal inventory is necessary. And it is also a known fact that we are going to think wrong at times. Now we are sober, and I believe we know right from wrong, but God leaves this up to us. You know, we go out in the garden in the spring and plant potatoes. Well, God sees that they bloom, grow, and multiply into many more potatoes. Now, if we want potatoes, we plant them. And if we wish to eat them, we have to dig them up. God is not going to dig them up for us. Now, the point I'm trying to put across here is to continue to take personal inventory. But if we find in this inventory we are wrong, our thinking begins to stink. I say here, better do something about it ourselves, now, today. God leaves it up to us here. I think we should, I think we should change the last part of this step 10, Bill, not rely on God to do those things that we must do ourselves. You see, God helps us who are willing to help themselves. This is my opinion, Bill. Yeah. Yeah. Real good, Fitz. Thanks. Jim, what reaction will you take to the tenth step? <laughs> well, Bill, I think you've got a pretty good idea of my reaction, or let's say my action. That what Fitz just said about our thinking begins to stink slays me. <laughs> but by the dragons of Satan angels, he's right. Well, I'm going to call it plain stinking thinking, and I mean some of the thinking I really do stinks. <laughs> Like old Fitz says about digging them Irish cobblers is damn good philosophy, too. Of course, the main action I would take in this step is to get the God stuff clear out of it. But I do believe this continuing on a personal inventory is mighty important to our sobriety. You know, but when Fitz's stinking thinking creeps into our minds, it's time to do something about it then and there. You, know, you think plain... Uh, you think sobriety, you think positive, you think, think, think. And when you're wrong, promptly admit it. Now, Bill, this is a good step. One of the best steps you have on the list. And for a lush like me, I'm sure going to use this step. In fact, <laughs> I may even believe in this God you guys keep talking about through this step. And that's my opinion, Bill. Fiber gas. Coming from Jim. <laughs> Look, and to think we were going to find some way of getting our boy Jim out of this foundation. And here he comes up with the tenth step, just as I have it here to read. Continued to take a personal inventory, and when we were wrong, promptly admitted it. Now, now, what do you think of that? Howard, I vote elegant printing. You? Well, I sure would follow suit there, too. All right. Ruth? I have it down, Bill, as you last quoted it. I knew that would pass the group. Okay. 
That's step ten. Well, it's getting pretty late, and if you're as tired as I am, <laughs> I guess we should call it a night. We're close to finishing these 12 steps, and the last two are vitally important. So I suggest we get some rest and come back tomorrow night and complete the job. Scene three. After two and a half months of haggling, the group comes back the next night and finishes the 12 steps. And here they go again. Boy, what a short night. Well, well, yeah. <laughs> didn't even get time to change clothes. <laughs> I met myself I time to shave. Didn't have time to take a shower, I guess. <laughs> right. Right. Hey, that's, that's good. Yeah. Here's what there is. Yes, sir. Say, Fitz, have, de- have you come up with anything on uh, the name of this book? We were going to call it The Way Out. You done anything about that? Yeah, Bill. Um, as you had asked, you wanted uh, you wanted the way out by Bill Wilson, and I went to the Library of Congress in Washington D.C. as you asked to check on that, and I found out there are already twelve books entitled The Way Out, and that would make us the thirteenth. I don't want that. I'm very spiritual. But I'm also a little superstitious. Me too. <laughs> We had a little meeting with, uh, amongst ourselves, and uh, consulted with uh, Dr. Bob and his group back in Akron, and uh, we uh, we decided we would call the name of the of the book Alcoholics Anonymous by Bill Wilk. No, no, anonymous. No, no, no. By Bill. Here. By Bill W. You guys, this is an anonymous program. Oh, I like that. Alcoholics Anonymous. That'll be the name of the book. Oh, good. All right. Okay. Maybe it'll be the name of the foundation. Who knows? All right. Uh, Alcoholics right. Anonymous. I knew we'd get something going here. I Has anybody it. heard anything from the West Coast? Yeah, I got a nephew that's out Where's there working in uh, on nephew. the West Coast and. Uh, I hear from him quite a bit. He said that they were building a, a man-made island over there. They call it Treasure Island. It seems to be between the city of Oakland and the city of San Francisco. It's a man-made island. They're going to have the World's Fair there. And this would be an ideal place to send that book out there. Maybe we could get some some people out there. Are there, are there any drunks on the West Coast? <laughs> I don't know. I think so. I know that there's a little town down there they call San Jose, and and uh, they they got some wineries and stuff down there. Does anybody get drunk on wine? Ha! <laughs> <laughs> Can anybody get drunk on wine? I thought that was just an after dinner drink. Well, you know that's just a teaser. That's just to come on. They give you with me. I take a little sip of that at dinner time, and then I say, okay. Now bring on the juice. I really want it, see? <laughs> hey, Bill. You know, I hear that Sally Rand and her newest colleague is going to be out there at the World's Fair, and I was just thinking, you know, I could take Joe out there and we could take the book out. All you right. Know, we could get with those people. Who knows what could come from it? I'll go. As long as <laughs> Sally Rand is on. <laughs> I think Henry ought to take the book out there, too, and he, he can sell a lot of them books. All right. Well, then let's finish the thing up. See if we can get it spread out to the West Coast. That'd be great. All right. Bill, we'll get out there and we'll sell some books. We'll make some bucks. Very good. You know, <laughs> this just amazes me. I've looked, you know, it just keeps running around in my head. I've read over what we've accomplished in changing the last ten steps that we've discussed. You know, we've altered and taken out and installed new words for the last two and a half months. We've really hashed around them. But the more I read them over, what we have with here is, I'm just amazed and so proud of this group and the very flexible program for the alcoholic. You know, this is strictly a set of steps that can be worked by any individual, regardless of race, religion, belief, or creed. Oh, in these past ten steps, we've learned this new way of life, how to live, 
how to let live, how to think, 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 how to make decisions, amends, and how to live a useful, normal, sober life with both pride and humility. But for the grace of God are we here tonight. The next two steps are continuing this way of life. I've been studying them over and believe very few changes are necessary. In fact, I'm sure that it must be added for the benefit of Jim and Henry and any of the others coming into our program that it must be God as we understand him. So here's what I've drawn up for step 11. We've sought through prayer and meditation to improve our conscious contact with God, praying only for knowledge of his will for us and the power to carry that out. Now the addition here will be simply our contact with God as we understand him. I think this is good. I concede to Jim and Henry and any of the others coming into this program for this phrase. Fitz, what is your opinion of this step with the addition? This step as you have it there, in my estimation, is the key to the entire program. Seek the Lord and you shall find your own peace of mind. Set aside a given amount of your time each day for meditation. Pray to your God as you understand him, and you will come to know him and understand him. You will come to know God's will for you. He will give you the power to carry out that will. Bill, I just say amen to step 11. Thanks, Fitz. What do you say, Henry? Well, I think it's rated fairly good with most of the gentlemen here, inasmuch as you've added God as we understand him. And since I'm very eager to get this book published, I'll go along. With the situation in Europe becoming more serious, it looks to me like Hitler is a grave danger to our freedom. And we just might get into this war yet. As I say, the sooner we publish the book, the better. So I'll vote okay on this step as you have it there, Bill. Thank you, Henry. Joe, how about you? I think it's a great step, Bill. It's a well-placed step and also a key step, as Fitz pointed out. I'll go with you on this one. Okay, Joe. Jim, old boy, have you any kick on the 11th step? No, to my surprise, I sort of like it. You know, I'm glad you added God as you understand him. That really helps me the way I see the God stuff. So I'll go along with you on this step 11 without any kick. <laughs> Coming from Jim. <laughs> Are we really surprised? <laughs> oh, okay. Not really. Don't give me an amen, though. <laughs> I'm fighting this thing. Hallelujah. Any comment from you, Paul? Yes, Bill. And God love you for step 11. And God does love you. That's why he gave you step 11. And that is our most important step. Set aside daily a few moments of meditation with God, and you will come to know what God's will is for you. And you shall receive the power to carry that out you will come to know and understand God if you will work this step. Gee, I see a lot of progress in Jim and Henry and in all of us. After all, we are not saints. We will never be perfect, but nothing should stop us from progressing spiritually a day at a time. We will grow on these steps, Bill, I say amen to step 11. Ah. Paul, I want to thank you. I want to thank you especially for the encouragement you've given us on our book. Howard? Well, Bill, you know, I'm in full accord. I don't think I could add or delete anything to the step or to the opinions of the rest of the people here. It's all around good, Bill. Thanks, Howard. Ruth? You any comments? Yes, I'd like to offer my congratulations to you for a wonderful step and to the rest of the group for their wonderful help, and I have it all ready for the typewriter. Oh, boy, can you imagine that? <coughs> we sit around gabbing and Ruth does all the work. Yes, sir. Sure does. You yeah. know, Ruth, you have been so good. You've done so much for the writing of this book. I want you to know we're all grateful to you. Well, I'm just glad to have been of help. Believe me, it's been a pleasure. Okay. Let's get on with the final step. Step one, or step twelve. 
having had a spiritual experience and a vision from God as the result of these steps, we must carry this message to other alcoholics who practice these principles in everything we do. Now, from the past experience with the other 10 to 11 steps and the various changes we've made, I have changed this step myself to read as follows. Having had a spiritual experience as the result of these steps, we tried to carry this message to alcoholics and to practice these principles in all our affairs. I have removed the vision and the must. I feel that it is too personal for the vision's part, and in the past steps, you all indicated that we should relieve the word must from taking these steps. Now, what do you think of this twelfth step? As it is. What do you think, Henry? Sounds good to me, Bill. I want to get the book printed and get some dough rolling in. A million bucks, a million bucks. All right. Jim? Real good stuff, Bill. Like Henry, I'm anxious to see the uh, book go in uh, publication. This? Bill, I think step 12 is well written the way you have it there. I see nothing wrong with this 12th step. Now, instead of making six patron calls, we can make 12 step calls. Oh, yeah. How about that? Okay. Yeah, that's all right. I think that this book and program will go real good. We should come out of it with a pretty good bankroll also. Right. Joe? Bill, step 12, as you have changed it, there has a lot in it. There's a huge amount of work in this step, but it is, it is good, and I vote we print it. Howard? Uh, good step, Bill. I vote to print it as you have it there. How many books do you think you will sell, Bill? I'd be, you know, they're real good. Like Henry said, a million books, a million bucks. You know, a million is a high figure to be shooting at. That's a hell of a pile of books. Yes. I'd say, hell, you know, sell them for a couple of bucks uh, cheaper. You don't have to sell as many and make a neat stack of dough. Okay. Paul? Well, Bill, I am sure that you know how I feel about your original draft on those steps. You know, if I had my say here that... I would not have changed any part of those 12 steps. But, through the conscience here of the group, and to have unity among us, I have no alternate, no other choice but to concur as you have step 12 there. But as to the financial end of this book, the money isn't our aim. It's the message to the still sick alcoholic that is suffering all over these United States, maybe even all over the world, counts. If this message could only reach him, I feel this book of Alcoholics Anonymous will save many, many lives. And I hope we give this book away. He must be out of his mind. No, sir, I repeat. I hope they would give this great God-given thing away. Thank you, Paul. Well, outside of Paul, you men are all seem to be aiming at a nice, neat profit on your investment in this thing. In the first place, you have your sights set too high on the amount of books we'll sell. And you're all thinking of the dollars we're going to make. Now, men, we had this program given to us from our Creator, our God as we understand Him. It must be freely given away. Oh, sure. We'll recover the cost to print, plus enough to secure the copyright. But there'll be no profit, and this book will be read by people, sick people, all over this world. Now, that's my fondest hope and my greatest faith. From working with you through these months, just because of the communication we alcoholics have with one another, I'm sure that you feel the same way as I do, really. Well, let's just say, to this book, we hereby dedicate these 12 steps. One, we admitted we were powerless over alcohol, that our lives had become unmanageable. Two, came to believe that a power greater than ourselves could restore us to sanity. 
three, made the decision to turn our will and our lives over to the care of God as we understood Him. Four, made a searching and fearless moral inventory of ourselves. Five, admitted to God, to ourselves, and to another human being the exact nature of our wrongs. Six, we're entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character. Seven, humbly ask him to remove our shortcomings. Eight, made a list of all persons we had harmed and became willing to make amends to them all. Nine, made direct amends to such people wherever possible, except when to do so would injure them or others. Ten, continued to take personal inventory, and when we were wrong, promptly admitted it. Eleven, sought through prayer and meditation to improve our conscious contact with God as we understood Him, praying only for knowledge of His will for us and the power to carry that out. Twelve, having had a spiritual experience as the result of these steps, we tried to carry this message to alcoholics and to practice these principles in all our affairs. And so this is the way the 12 steps of our program were first written, with as much adherence as possible to the original writing. There has been a certain amount of imagination as to what was said at the writing of the steps, since there were no scripts, tapes, or records of those meetings. But we assure you that this was as authentic as possible. And now I present to you the author, Homer G. I want to thank you for inviting us down here to produce the 12 steps. And uh, I will go on and finish chapter 5. I'll bet you that many of you out there hasn't knew or didn't know that there's that much meat in at chapter 5 and how it works. <laughs> and we've been hash browning it quite a bit. But there is a lot more than that in it yet. You know, uh, as we we go on to the end of this thing, you remember what Bill said? You may exclaim, what an order. I can't go through with it. Do not be discouraged. No one among us has been able to maintain anything like perfect adherence to these principles. We are not saints. The point is that we are willing to go along spiritual lines, principles we have set down are guides to progress. We claim spiritual progress rather than spiritual perfection. Now this is a multigraph of one of the first books. Our description of the alcoholic, chapter 2, the agnostic, and our personal adventures before and after have been diagnosed or designed to sell you three pertinent ideas. That uh, you are an alcoholic and cannot manage your own life. That probably no human power can relieve your alcoholism. That God can and will. If you are not convinced of these, of those vital issues, you ought to reread the book to this point, or else throw it away. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Bill wrote, and he didn't change it quite as, quite as quick. He still has humbly on our knees ask him to remove our shortcomings, holding nothing back. But we finally got it where it was today. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed the podcast. Sobercast is ad-free, and we'd like your help in order to keep it that way. So if you'd like to help us be self-supporting by pledging a dollar to a month, visit Sobercast.com and look for the donate links. Thank you very much.